Good evening. Good evening. God is such a good God. The Bible says this is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, I'm Pastor John Landon from Power for Living Ministries. We'd like to welcome all our members, our visitors, our first-time visitors. Uh, or somebody, you know, just dropping in from time to time, but we'd like to welcome you to our Wednesday evening Bible study. The Bible says to study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, and one of the biggest problems is biblical illiteracy. A lot of Christians just don't know what the Bible says. And so if you don't take time to study and take time out for Bible study and, and see the importance of that, you'll be missing out a lot on what God has for you, what God is doing, what God will do for you, what God is doing for you. And so I'd like to thank God for everyone here tonight also. Uh, we have our youngest member here tonight with us, Major. <laughs> you can't see, but I saw him Sunday. I had the tendency to go to the pulpit. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, there were very young people in the Bible that God used and called. So, thank God for that. I'm excited about Jesus tonight. How about you? Amen. Yes. I said, I'm excited. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Something about loving God. Something yeah. about praising God, magnifying God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give him some praise tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Facebook, keep doing this Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Hallelujah, Lord. Wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Glory. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Almighty God. Yes. Wonderful God. Yes. Prince of peace. Yes. Lord. Oh, bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Lord. Oh, 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 Lord. Oh,
the joy of the Lord ought to be your strength. Yes. You can't live for strength from nowhere. Mm. The joy of God. Yes. Amen. The joy of serving Him. Yes. The joy of ministering to people. Yes. Yes. Loving people. I love people. Yes. I do. I mean, I get disappointed, but I love people. Mm -hmm. I've been betrayed, but I love people. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. I've been hit but I love people. I love people. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe as a child of God, the love of God ought to be shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And so that's what we've been dealing with. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Truth. Amen. Uh, all these uh, terms are properly used. Uh, the helper, the comforter. And so we've been talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and how important he is in the believer's life, what he came to do, to lead us, to guide us into all truth. There are some things you do not going to know, and that's the only fear revealed to you. Yeah. You just cannot apprehend it. It's impossible because there are spiritual things, and they have to be spiritually discerned. That's why a lot of times, when a religious-minded person try to understand spiritual truth, they get off into either excess of dogma and doctrine, mm -hmm. overkill, or they get into they get, get too liberal with something. See, it's the Holy Spirit that balances us. That's the it. Word. That's it. That's Hallelujah. It. Good to see you over here. I'm right now. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> wow. He just came back from Hawaii. Mm. And so we're going to get into the Word of God. Yes, so we dealt with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We talked about Him. Jesus said that we should be baptized. John the Baptist said we should be baptized. All throughout the book of Acts. It's called the book of Acts. And what the reason why they could act and do the things that Jesus told them to do is because they had been filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Notice yes. the difference before they were filled and after they were filled. I'm talking about their character and everything. You see, before they were filled, they op they operated because Jesus had gave them authority. Okay? Exusius. They gave them authority. It was authoritative power. They could only operate when Jesus gave them that power. And then after they fulfilled that particular mission, it was gone again. So they didn't have that infilling. And throughout the Old Testament, it was the same thing. Uh, they operated when the Holy Spirit would come upon them and move upon them to, to carry out a particular mission and then he would live and basically only kings say kings kings the high priests or priests high priests priest. and prophets. prophets that was it if you were in that group wow. you were kind of left just to study the law and try to live by the law you had, you were not you didn't really have any power and they were left powerless. But in the New Testament, Jesus said, in the book, book of Joel 2.28, 2, he said, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Glory. He said, I'm not going to exclude anyone. Anyone that wants to be filled and hungry, he said, I'll fill you. Yes. He said, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. That's why, you know what, I don't worry about this generation. Because he said, your sons and your daughters. You see, there's sons and daughters in every generation, right? right. Yeah, that's right. right. And so, I don't worry about this. Our problem is, we think that we can fulfill and take care of things naturally. It takes God supernatural power to, to save an individual, to work an individual, to deliver an individual. And so, I, I'm never stuck because I'm constantly looking to God for how should I do this? Mm. And if you look to the Holy Spirit, He will give you answers, yes. direction. Yes. You need to know how to navigate through this world. It's not just world wicked. Yes. It's not it's yes. cold, confused people. Yes. I mean, right. and so how do we navigate under our own power? Yes. At man's best, he keep messing it up, right? That's, That's right. right. Every time. Yeah. 
He created laws and he created laws and what I guess the laws that he created and he created and I and he undo and then he created and he started something else and it's constant start. What I love about God, he's steadfast. Mm -hmm. The truth is always the truth. You see, it never changes. Yes. Then we have to adjust ourselves to it, but it never changes. And so we would uh, most pre people have this problem. It's not talking about the infilling of the Holy Spirit. It's tongues. Mm -hmm. The problem is tongues. Mm -hmm. You see? Because you can't argue with whether God talked about filling with people because he said it in Acts, the second chapter, Acts, the eighth chapter, Acts, the ninth chapter, Acts, the tenth chapter, Acts, the nineteenth chapter. You have to put blinders on your face to not see it. It's there. It's throughout scripture. And anything that God reemphasized over and over again, right. it's because he wants us to know it. Yes. So then he's not about that confusion, right? Mm -hmm. But the Bible says the devil is out of confusion. So why, and we talked about last week, why would he want to confuse us? Huh? I'm not talking about God. God would want to confuse us, right? Right. He says he's not out of confusion. But why would Satan want to be given in the mix and keep us confused about him? To make us powerless. Say it, and I'm going to get to the other Powerless. Mm -hmm. Make us powerless? Yes. Well, when you see confusion and the art of confusion, remember when they had the same language back in the Old Testament? Mm -hmm. Remember how they came together and God said if he would not have scattered the language that they were trying to build a tower to heaven, that they would have it succeeded. So where there's unity, there's power. Mm -hmm. He don't want the believers to unify and know this word because the, the Holy Ghost brings us power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if we all have power, now we have power against him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if we all come together with that same power, man, we, like he said, they would have built that tower. We can do things in the Holy Ghost when we come together. Yeah, think about this. Did not Jesus say a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand? Yeah, that's right. Say name ain't divided. Them demonic spirits are all together. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. To rob us, mm -hmm. to kill, Stay and to destroy. They, yeah. they know their goal. Mm -hmm. And they are, in one, they, they are with one mind and one accord. Remember when Jesus said they, they, they accused him of being the chief devil, mm -hmm. accused him of being Satan? He said, <laughs> You can't. A devil don't cast out a devil. A kingdom that got divided against some things that see the enemy knows how God works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We just don't. Yeah. It's too many believers just don't know how God moves and works. And so when believers on the day of Pentecost, they were with one mind, with one accord, yeah, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Come on. Holy Ghost fell. Yes, yes sir. Mm -hmm. And they began to speak. Yes. And this now we talked about last week, they began to speak in Acts the second chapter in other tongues. Remember that everybody heard them speaking their own language? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay? So all throughout the world, God wanted to give the gospel. He filled them and then they heard them speak in their other tongue. But then as we began to travel in Acts 10 and Acts 19, it didn't say other tongues. Mm -hmm. Okay? They just heard them speak in that language. But what language? Spiritual language. It's a spiritual language. And in Acts 14, Paul clears it up and he calls it unknown. And that's why the enemy doesn't want you speaking in tongues. Because in Acts, the second chapter, every man heard them speaking their own language, right? Yeah. So wherever the language is understood, Satan understands it too. Yes, sir. But God gave us a, a special weapon. Mm -hmm. He said, unknown. 
And we'll talk about it in Acts, 1 Corinthians 14. We'll look at that more in depth tonight. We started off last week. Because God wanted us to be able to talk to him. You know, like we talked about, we talked about codes, about sending out codes. Mm -hmm. yeah. In the military, those that have been in the military, we understand that. There are codes that when you want to get past your enemy, you want to get a message. Yeah, that's right. Sometimes behind enemy lines, right? I understand the code. Elder Garrett understands the code. Elder Johnson understands the code. But if the code was been given to you all, Sister Pat, Brother Daniel, this is Karen, this is Kyrisha, First Lady, if y'all don't know the code, y'all can't block it, right? Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. You may hear it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you don't know what it means. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. But the person that it was meant to reach, yeah. mm -hmm. they understand. Yeah. Okay. So let's go into First Corinthians 14 chapter. So God in his wisdom mm -hmm. knew remember when we talked about last week when Daniel prayed mm -hmm. that's right and the bible says a demonic force a demonic chief stood up against Daniel's prayer mm -hmm. so now God heard it the moment he prayed mm -hmm. but so who else heard it the enemy the enemy Satan heard it. Yeah. Just like he you heard your prayer when you pray in your language. Whatever that language would be, right? So he began to fight. Yeah. Now the Bible says God heard it the moment he prayed, right? Come on, bro. Come on. But he said, the king of Persia, or, 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 the, or the, my chief demon, mm -hmm. withstood. Mm -hmm. He said the answer was sent. Wow. Right. The moment he prayed. Yeah. yeah. But the king of Persia will stun him. Mm -hmm. and then God released that. But the, uh, the archangel Michael, and they broke through. Mm -hmm. But that was the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. We're in the New Testament now. Yeah. Come on, sir. All right. Now we still pray in English because that's proper. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes you don't know what to pray and how to pray and what to actually say to God. Now we got a secret way. That the king of Persia don't know what. We're saying, so he don't know how to react to it. Come on. Okay? So 1 Corinthians 14 chapter. Now we talked about, I'm just kind of reviewing. We talked about 1 Corinthians 12 chapter was dealing with the gifts of the Spirit. And uh, the Corinthians were gifted people. I mean, they believed in the gifts of the Spirit. They flowed and operated in them. But they were some carnal people. And a lot of you see we confuse gifted and people flowing in the gifts with actually spirituality. You can be very gifted and be very carnal at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Paul said, I couldn't even speak to you as spiritual. I had to talk to you like you're a carnal man, because that's just how you were acting. Yeah. Where there was envy and strife and all that stuff going on. See, when a person is operating in, on that level, they're carnal. And the Bible says they're babies. When people are act, walking in strife in church and acting, uh, coming against one another and all that, one walk in church and I can't speak to you, I have to walk around that. You ain't spiritual. I don't care what type of gift you flow in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're not spiritual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Say gifted. 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 That's what you are. Go ahead, Abigail. It's funny because I was in a church like that. Mm -hmm. And these folk could sing, they could preach, they could teach. But man, you talk about drama. Yeah. You talk about looking unsafe. Mm -hmm. And Paul had expressed that you don't do stuff like that because you make yourself a castaway. Mm -hmm. And I had seen these folk passion. They sing down the power of God. God would same and they go right outside and, yeah. and, and, and drink, they go out there smoking, they go out there cussing, they go out there fighting. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wait a minute, did you just, <laughs> did God just use you? Mm -hmm. Didn't God just mightily 
Yeah. I, I'm not talking yeah. about. I'm talking about a mighty move of God. Yeah. And they go right outside and do that. See, and see that's what we don't. Want, that's see, we have to understand. Just because God uses a gift, the Bible says the gifts and calling of God without repentance. God, if God gives you the gift of uh, tongues and interpretation, He ain't taking that. I mean, once, I mean, once you say it, He ain't taking it back. He gives you the gift of prophecy. He ain't taking it back. He gives you the gift of healing, the miracle. Don't mean you're spiritual. He means He gave you that gift. He don't take it back. He just makes you accountable for it. What you do with it. That's why people can flow in a certain way and God can use them and walk right out of church and be just opposite of what they just how God used them. Okay? So the Holy Spirit just remember, there's the nine gifts of the Spirit, the Bible talks about, or manifestation, because we don't own them. We can't turn them on when we want to. God turns them on for his church to be benefited from. You understand what I'm saying? But then there's the nine fruits of the Spirit. Come on. We can operate them all the time, every day, 24-7. That deals with our character. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So the Holy Spirit is not come to make us gifted. He came that we'll have temperance. We'll walk out of love, meekness, Long suffering or patience. He came to do that too. And so Paul talked about the gifts of the Spirit, the whole chapter, First uh, Corinthians 12 chapter. He talks and he deals with it, talks about it. And then he interrupts it, First Corinthians 13 chapter, and then he talks about nothing but love. <laughs> he said, I need to talk to you all. He said, if you have a faith that can remove mountains, because we think people are. Man, they, they, they can just believe God. I've had people tell me, man, how do you, how do you believe God? How do you see that? How do, it ain't me. Yeah. Sometimes I forget what I done said after I done said it. I forgot. I don't, I don't even remember saying it. People have walked up to me and said, well, you said this and you said that. And if I said it, I don't forget. I mean, I really forgot because you know why? We're nothing but the holes. Yes. We ain't the water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. And when you get confused as a hose without thinking you're the water, then you got problems. problems yeah. And you create problems. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is the water flowing out of us. We just the hose. And some people don't they know how to yield to that gift when it begins to flow. But the same person will not yield themselves. To the fruits of the spirit mm -hmm. the flow in their life all right so then he deals with first Corinthians and he talks about love then he comes back in first Corinthians 14 chapter and began to tell us uh how we should flow in tongues because it was very important because they i mean they they were i mean these people were on it and paul didn't want to discourage them from not flowing in and the power of the holy ghost but he wanted him to, them to understand some things. So he said in the first Corinthians 14 and 1, reads us the fact. Follow out charity. Follow after love, walk in love. Go ahead. And desire spiritual gifts. But desire spiritual gifts. There's nothing wrong with you desiring spiritual gifts. Now, God may not give you what you desire. He may give you something else. But you should desire spiritual gifts. Because mm -hmm. why? People need the gifts of God to flow. If somebody needs to be healed, yes. the gifts of the healing need to flow, right? Yeah. Somebody needs a miracle, the gifts of miracle need to flow, right? Right. And see so what I love about this is because if Jesus can only be in one place at one time, or in the Old Testament, the king, the prophet, the priest, they can only be right there at one time. And they had to call for Elijah, right? That's right. They had to call for Elijah, right? When Naaman would need to be healed, he had to go find and seek out. Elisha. Yes, yeah, right. Now the little girl that told him to seek out Elijah, <coughs> she felt she couldn't do nothing, but she could direct him to the person that could do something. Mm -hmm. Well, glory to God. In the New Testament, we ain't got to call for Elijah. 
we can pray ourselves. These signs shall follow them that what? Believe. Believe. We don't follow signs. Signs shall follow you as a believer. Are you with me? Yes, yes sir. Yes. So he said, follow after charity and desire spiritual gift. Read on, Sister Bad. But rather that ye may prophesy. Go ahead. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue. Now, speak. unknown. Mm -hmm. Unknown to who? Read. Speaketh not unto men. It's unknown to men. It's unknown to Satan. Yeah. That's right. That's what he said, He that speaketh in unknown tongues speaketh not unto yes. men, but to who? God. You got a direct line that you're speaking directly to God. Have you ever been in a place that you, you are, that have been filled with the Holy Ghost and, and, and praying in tongues? You didn't know what you were, what, what you needed to pray, but you knew that it was a of an urgency or a need and, and you just begin to pray in the spirit. Mm -hmm. yes. And you pray to the point where after a while you feel the release and you still don't even know what you pray. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes somebody God God give you witness to somebody come along and say, you know what? I just they begin to express what they were going through or something like that. And then you're like, God, the Lord had me praying about that. And sometimes you don't need to know what you're praying because you get nosy then. Mm. <laughs> sometimes you just need to pray. Yes. You know, uh, somebody sometimes when people are you don't watch it, they ask you for a prayer, they ask for a prayer request, and you be, your mind begin to want to share that your natural mind get off into that. Mm -hmm. Well, why do you want to pray about that? I wonder what's going on. <laughs> That's your natural mind. Yeah. See? So he said, you don't speak unto man, you speak unto who? No. God. Okay. But we don't suspect. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. No man understand him, how be in the spirit he speaketh mystery. That word is a mysterium, that Greek word of mystery. And we talked about it last week, but I'm just covering some of this and we're going to move on down to it. Mysterium means that which being outside of the range of unassisted natural apprehension. Your mind can't comprehend when a person when your person is praying in the spirit. Okay? Man can't comprehend it. Hmm. It can only be known by divine revelation. If it's known then God has to reveal it. That's what we talk about. We'll get the tongues and interpretation. Someone can begin to speak in tongues in a service. Now, Paul is really dealing with a church setting, okay? Someone began to speak in tongues. The other person don't even know what they're talking about. Hmm. Yeah. But God then, by divine revelation, reveals him what he wants to say to the church. You got me? Yes. It's not translation. Oh. That's why it's interpretation. Okay. So the, the tongue may be one minute. The interpretation may be 10 seconds. Because they're not translating. They're interpreting. Okay. That's why you hear someone they begin to pray in tongues and speak in tongues and then interpretation, or then the, the tongue may be short and interpretation is much longer. Yeah. Because it's not translation, it's what? Interpretation. interpretation. <laughs> yes, sir. You know, over there, I know you were over there in um, 1 Corinthians 13, and it says you have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries. You know these all mysteries and knowledge. Mm -hmm. So that means you obtain these things. You know and, and, and you have all knowledge. And you can have faith to remove mountains. So this is saying that this person when you're filled with the Holy Ghost there are mysteries and there are knowledge. Then there's a thing of faith that you have that you've never had before. That you've never obtained. And that comes with the gifting. Mm -hmm. 
And when that small, it's small. Like I said, I knew someone, <laughs> and man, that brother could flow. Mm -hmm. I mean, Pastor, he was dead on every time when mm -hmm. that gift was in operation. Mm -hmm. But his character was jacked up. Mm -hmm. See? And think about it. See, it's, it's, that gift is not flawed. It's Many not. times the person that is flowing through is really flawed. Mm -hmm. And so, you know what I think, the natural thinking is, well, why would God use that person to make so flawed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. That bothers me. <laughs> and it bothers a lot of Christians, you gotta understand. God makes a decision who's going to, who he's going to get what gifts. Yeah. But you are the steward. That means you have to make sure that your spirit is pure and undefiled and, and you're walking upright before God. Because what happens then, that you're gifted, but you make yourself a castaway. That brother was that uh, you're talking about. That's yeah. what happened to him. Right. Because people knew I knew him well. That he was gifted. But then you know this other side to this person. Right. That you begin to question even the gift yourself. Even though the gift is from God. Because the character is so flawed. You see? And so and, and, what's, and when, you, when you're flowing in certain, especially certain gifts, because everybody has been gifted with something, okay? Or oh, what's, oh, Jesus said some were given different gifts, right? Or uh, talents. Everybody is gifted with something, but the gift that we magnify is these, especially in our charismatic Pentecostal church. The word of wisdom, word of knowledge, mm -hmm. gifts of healing, yes. gifts of miracle, we we elevate them. You know why? Because they 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 get they they're so personal. Who doesn't want a miracle? Mm -hmm. Who doesn't want to be healed? Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't want to be told a way out of whatever they're in? Well, who don't want to be told what God's going to do in certain areas of their life? And where the knowledge comes. Mm -hmm. You remember in the Old Testament. Uh, they would be wanting to find out something. They would even bring offerings to the prophet and say, look, they would lay it down. And, and could you please tell us this, what, what a prophet was really. And prophet, a prophet is a ministry gift. Prophecy is a manifestation, just like word of, word, wisdom, <laughs> word of knowledge, tongue. They call it a gift, but if you read it, says the manifestation of the spirit. Come on. So don't confuse somebody prophesying with being a prophet. Okay. Okay? And so they, we see all these things, that, but them gifts we really magnify. And somebody's giving out a word of wisdom. I mean, I, I've seen people, uh, and I'm not here to question whether they really use the God or whether they really messing with some stuff that's wicked, you know? But I've seen some people that uh, they call out your address, your name, your age, all of these things. Well, that impresses people. And it may very well be of God, right? Because we can see it in the Bible. Well, people are magnifying those gifts. They'll magnify a person as being used in those areas. That's why Peter and Paul and said, now, don't be worshiping me. Don't be bowing down to me. Yeah. They understood. I ain't getting in trouble with God for y'all. Because <laughs> you know, I'm not going to do it. That's right. God is to be glorified. And that's what the gifts do. If they're really used properly, they glorify God and help people. And if God is not being glorified, if the person is being glorified, you ain't really helping people. Yeah. Because you point them to you, mm -hmm. not to him. But a lot of times the reason why that happens is because people are greedy, full of pride, arrogant. They use 
the gift is used and then they take it and manipulate people's lives. But that people have that gift. People have to answer to God for what they do, what God gives them. Okay? All right. So let's move on. So we're speaking mysteries, but mysteries that are known to God, right? Yes. yes. Unknown to man, known, to, known God. to God. So if I was the devil, I'd get upset too. Because I can't, I don't know what saying. That ain't go speaking in them tongues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you're saying. I don't know how to how to operate, maneuver in this situation on me. Yes, Scott. You know, I see it all the time. You know, in nail shops, uh, when ladies are in there, uh, people getting their nails done, and um, you know, the different cultural people are doing the nails <laughs> and talking in a different language. It, it's some people that really get upset um, because. Uh, Oh yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't know which one is on. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, like in the nail shops when uh, people are in there getting their nails done and you have another culture that's in there doing the nails and people aren't familiar with their language and uh, they think that they get talked about and you know they snicker and laughing and stuff in their language, mm -hmm. in their language. Mm -hmm. And they get offended. I, I see it on, you know, uh, TikTok and all of the, you know, the different social media net, uh, uh, outlets. But, um, you know, it's some people that have gone so far as to learn a different language and uh, um, put on Google Translator so they'll know what they're talking about while they're in there. So they won't be left out, you know, feeling like, oh, so they talking about my feet or my hands or what, what mm -hmm. else, you know, you, you don't know what they're talking about. They could be talking about their children. You, you, you don't know, know. But, you know, it's a lot of people that go through that in, in that arena. Yeah. You know, and um, I was over in Germany one time, a vacation over there. And for the most part, most Germans, especially younger, they speak English well, you know. Uh, and, but I had went into this area of Germany, and I went into this store, and uh, this, this she, but she was relatively a young lady, she's about my age at the time, and uh, I wanted to buy something. And so I took it to the counter, and she was telling me what the price, was the transaction, right? Problem was, I didn't know what she was telling me. <laughs> yeah. And she didn't know what I was saying back to her. Mm. <laughs> so there we there was a say mediator. Mm -hmm. There was this old German man mm -hmm. that understood English mm -hmm. and German. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. And he closed the gap and said, She's asking you how much this costs. And he's telling me he was asking you, what do I need to give you? Mm -hmm. So we made the transaction. You see the Holy Spirit. It's glory, glory. glory. Mm -hmm. Makes transactions yes. in the Hallelujah. Spirit. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. He says, you're saying, Father, and the Holy Spirit says, this is what he's saying, Father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You yes. see? Right. And so it's clear between the Father absolutely giving. Holy Spirit knows what you're saying. Mm -hmm. The only one that's bothered by it. Yeah. Who? Man. Man and who? Devil. Yeah. 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 Man that don't understand it. Mm -hmm. The devil that don't want you to do it. And the devil that don't want you to do it. Yeah. Got gotcha. you. Gotcha. I wouldn't want you to do it either. Mm -hmm. Why would I want you to pray in the Spirit if it, I knew was going to give you an advantage? Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. That's it. So I would do anything and everything to stop you because I don't want you to have that advantage. Wow. Mm. wow. That's amazing. Wow. Read on, on, sister. Uh, let's try to get, get something through here because I covered a lot of this last we don't know yeah. where, where I have you cut stop when I interrupt the end. We're going to read from verse 3. Go ahead, read on. Okay. But he that prophesies speaketh unto men 
to edification and exhaustion and comfort. Okay, now so that now so this is why he's doing he's really doing with a church setting. Because certain things just should not get out of order. And the, the church of court was they, they they were just on one hundred all the time. They was hyped and when when God let's let's, let's they were just they never thought about order. Uh, we're going to listen, whatever it was. And, then, and, and, and yet, <laughs> the most unspiritual church involvement, it's like you dealt with that they wrote to. Because they had some wickedness going on in that church too. And so Paul was constantly bringing correction and, and, and trying to straighten out things when he wrote to them. Because they were right. And the Holy Spirit, well, Paul, what about this? And this is going on. That's happening. Paul says, look, this is how you deal with this. The Holy Spirit was downloading him. This is how you handle this. This is what you do with this. This is how you handle this. And so he, 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 now he's talking about a church setting. Say church setting. Church setting. Church setting. I talk like in your home. Mm-hmm. And when you pray in the Spirit in your home, pray all day long if you want. Yes. There ain't nobody busy. But when you're in a church setting, there should be a certain order. Mm-hmm. Read on. Right. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. Now prophecy, okay, prophecy is in the known language of that language of that of them people, right? But what does it do? Once again, before we get into unknown, but he that prophesies, speaking unto man to what? Edification. Exhortation and comfort. So all of this stuff that all of a sudden now see that like I said, the author of the prophet is different than prophecy. God ain't telling you to get to the end and rebuke everybody in your prophecy. Hmm. <laughs> to correct everyone. No, no. That's prophesying. What does it say? What does prophesying do? Prophesying. Come on, what does it say? Exhortation. To edification. Mm-hmm. Right. Exhortation. And exhortation. And exhortation and what? Comfort. 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 Mm-hmm. That's what the manifestation of prophecy does. It ain't you get your stuff together, mm-hmm. come. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's that person. Mm-hmm. It ain't a rebuke. You ain't a prophet. You prophesy. To edification, what does that word mean? Yes, to yeah. build up. Build up. Yes. So what's coming out of your mouth when you're prophesying? Because any a babe can prophesy. Major filled with the Holy Ghost can prophesy. Yes. But when you're prophesying in the church, it's for what? Edification. Edification. Building up. Mm-hmm. Exhortation. Exhortation. And what? Comfort. 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 Mm-hmm. Somebody says, stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's what prophecy is in the church. It's not rebuke. They're not a prophet. Sometimes people want to get out of their way because they want to look a certain way. They want to look like they're authoritative and and God is... If people knew the cost, where the cost would be a true prophet of God, you wouldn't have a lot of people running around here talking about using that title. Hmm. You're right. Do you really want blood on your hands? Because hmm. you're saying you're the mouthpiece of God. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, now look at the fourth verse. He that's speaking on own tongue does what? Edify. Edify himself. They use that word edify. Edification and now we'll edify. He said that word edify means to build up. Now, if I was Satan, 
when I want you to build yourself up. No. Mm -hmm. If I had got your immune system down, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, when your immune system is broken down, mm -hmm. it's hard to have strength and to be strong. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Right. And everything can attack your body. See, give it to her. <laughs> when your immune system, when everything can do what's this scary, I want them to, to hear that. People to hear that. Everything can attack your body. When your immune system is down, you are more susceptible to attacks, right? Yes. More susceptible. I, I, I heard uh, someone that was in a, uh, uh, a nurse or a doctor, I heard one say, one of the most, the easiest place to get a disease is in the hospital. You did? Yeah. yeah. Because more people have their I mean, immune system is down yeah. mm -hmm. and the diseases are up. Yeah, that's so true. You ain't there because you feel well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Satan knows if you are if your spirit is down, mm -hmm. you you become more of a prey. Mm -hmm. But if praying in tongues builds you up or edifies you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're less susceptible to his tricks yes. and wild or trickery and what he's trying to do. Because why? You're built up. That's why I'm not to say you, you, you know, something when you come, you need to get your immune system built up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they may tell you take certain things to get your system built up. You need certain uh, uh, things, to, you know, they say you need sunlight, don't they? Mm -hmm. Vitamin D. Mm -hmm. Be vitamin D. Different things. Mm -hmm. Well, we got spiritual immune systems too. Mm -hmm. If we don't watch it. That's so true. Yeah. So true. Mm -hmm. Let me say this, sir. And I want I, I please try to understand. Most people that are really born again are not trying to go out and do that, which is wrong. <laughs> they just ain't built up so that when stuff come at them, they can say it. I tell people all the time, it's not that I am strong in myself or so wise in myself. I just know how to build myself up. So when stuff come, you ain't trying to get built up. You built, you've been building. Your, I pray in the spirit all the time. I pray in, 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 when I'm in my car. Yeah. I pray at home. I pray walking. I can go on the track walking, just praying in the spirit. Mm -hmm. I be in my car driving, just praying in the spirit. Yes. I be at home. Most most of my prayer time is not spent in English. I may spend uh, five, ten minutes, and I may spend another hour and a half praying in the spirit. Why? I'm building myself up. That's what you do when you pray in the Spirit. You build yourself up. Elder Gary, go ahead. Amen. Jude 1 and 20. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's where you build yourself up in your most holy faith. Yes. And can't nobody build you up but you. That's why a lot of Christians, they, they, they're so dependent on some Christians that, you know, I need to, I need to hear from God. You can hear from God. Mm -hmm. I need you to pray. You can pray. Mm -hmm. yeah. I need God to work. God, God, you, God will work a miracle through you. You don't know how often that I, see, you have to understand, I have to use the same thing I'm telling you to use. Yes. Mm -hmm. If I stop praying in the spirit and building myself up, <laughs> I'm going to be weak. Yes. I'm going to be susceptible. Yes, sir. You see, but you... That's why the enemy doesn't want you to pray in the spirit. Because he knows you're building yourself up. 
So now he'll do everything he can to fight your mind. Fight, fight your mind. Yes, he will. Yeah. Why are you praying in spirit? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, uh, uh, Father Carter. Go ahead, Daddy. <laughs> uh, uh, I think it was uh, I think it was my third my third intubation. Um, I, I, when I came out of it, I had to got a phone call from my uncle, and he's a he he's really devoted to to God. Mm -hmm. And he called me and he said, I, he said, I got something I need to tell you. He said, it's not because you did this to yourself. So don't, he said, don't own that. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, I don't know why, but he said, I just was told to tell you, don't own that and own your healing. Mm -hmm. And uh, because before that, when I first when on my first intubation, I said, well, I did this to myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I smoked a cigarette for 40 something years. I did this, I, I did this. But uh, when he said that to me, it rang, it, it rang a bell in my head because it was, it was something that I needed to hear at the time because mm -hmm. I was ready to give up. Mm -hmm. And I was okay. ready to just say, I'm just getting myself pity and say, you know, it's over with. But when he when he called me and said that, it, it, it wasn't it wasn't nothing that I had called him and told him. Mm -hmm. He just said that to me, and that and that that's what changed my whole mindset. Yeah, when God when God began to throw against me, but think about it, it's scripture. Mm -hmm. Every truly a new creature in Christ, and all things are passed away. Then you should know. I mean, it happened to your body, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't have to keep on it. Yeah, I acknowledge it. Yeah. I'm a new creature. Love so me. now I'm going to own what God said I can own. Mm -hmm. Because whether Sigrid did that to you or whether some other sin did something to us, we all have to come to a faith that we have to begin to believe God's word. Yes. About what we did, right? We, that just the basic salvation, right? Now you believe God that He, he saved you, in spite of all the sins you committed. <laughs> but you want to own you, what you did, what you did to your body. Mm -hmm. But you, you now everything else, mm -hmm. you forgive, it. <laughs> and you forgave yourself, because you knew God had forgave you. But I need to own this. Mm -hmm. That's what Satan wants to do. Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Isn't it a thing that we should realize as well? We're in a fallen world. Mm -hmm. And if we're in a fallen world and we're in the kingdom of the world, we're going to do what the world does. So if he comes and says we're a new creature, that means that we have now been excused. We've been forgiven. Mm -hmm. We've been pardoned. So why carry anything else on from that point? Yeah. Because we have to do what we were doing. We were slaves to sin. Mm -hmm. See, and so it makes no different what type of slaves you were. All of us are slaves to sin. And so once you give your life to Christ, what I've learned, that's what Paul said, you got to renew your mind. Yes. You got to begin to think, okay, this is what God says about me. I know all of the, all that, all of those things are fact, but what is the truth? It was a fact that I did this and then that. I, I, I remember when I used to work at uh, the, the Center for Disease Control. There was a young man out there, and um, he had had AIDS, and that was really in his height, you know, when it was, everybody was just dying of AIDS and things. And he said, man, I know he was just breaking his I know God's right. I know what God's done for me. It's so I, I you know I, I know what he's talking about, right? I know God saved me and he was just going on. He said, He healed me. He said it was in my blood. They had it, it was a fact. They had it on record. And God totally healed me. They had that on record. They couldn't understand it. So they just said, that was a phenomenon. We are a phenomenon. If we don't understand how, maybe we that someone would misread us. Uh, because when the world can't explain. Yeah, make excuses. Mm -hmm. And they don't believe in God. Mm -hmm. Then they got to explain it the best way they can. Because they know they had this. Mm -hmm. But now, 
this don't exist. Michael told me the same thing. He said they studied him. I forgot him how long. Because he had this cancer in his body that was eating up his body. And the doctors saw it. They saw it on the, the MRI. And they saw it on the CAT scan. And they, they saw it. And then all of a sudden it was gone. Wow. And they, the doctor got, got to the point, I don't know if he got under conviction or what. But he finally, he said, you know what, you can, you can sue, me, sue us if you want. <laughs> he told my mother, he said, but we know you had cancer. We see it. It's on the screen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see, my, most of my life, my uncle had been an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. And all of that, you know, all, all that comes with it. But when he got saved, he got saved. Mm -hmm. Glory. Amen. Now your body a lot of times has to catch up with your spirit even after you get saved. Your body don't know what your spirit knows. Mm. Just like you got to retrain your mind. Yeah. See, that's why your body still have cravings that you say have before you got saved. But you got to retrain it. You can't, you, can, no, you can't do that no more. No, you can't act like that no more. And so... We have to receive what God has done. Mm. Believe what God has done. Yes. Act on what God has done. That's right. You see? And so, those out there listening to me, if you want the Holy Spirit, you have to ask God. And I hope I've done enough to try to let you understand Tongue is to benefit you, not any or nobody else. It's for a witness to you what God has done in your That's life. That's it. That's it. It ain't nothing for us to pop to get puffy about and grab I speak, you don't. No, that ain't what it's about. It's to, so that you can be edified, built up, so that you can pray and strengthen yourself. And if you want the baptism of the Holy Spirit, ask God. He said, if you just ask Him, He'll give it to you. That's all you got to do is ask. You ain't got to try to figure it out. Just ask Him. Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Come on. Just ask Him. Yes. That's it. See, he feel me, I ain't even asked him, but I ain't know the action, but I wanted everything he had. Amen. Everything that was belonged to me that God had promised to give me. Amen. And what did he say? Wait for the promise of the Father, right? I didn't know, but he knew. See, that's what I love about God. He knows your heart. If the heart is hungry, yes. you don't have to have understanding if the heart is hungry. But you have to ask. So ask him. The Lord fill me with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And when you're worshiping him, loving him, and that when tongues begin to flow out of you, I've seen people, when it happened, they stop it. Remember that little brother in that church here wanted the Holy Ghost so bad, y'all? Hey. Uh, what's his name? Page. Yeah. And he was about to go overseas the next day. He came that night so that he could get filled. And he was just worshiping and praising God, and God filled him. He began to just overflow and speak in tongues. He stopped and shocked him. <laughs> <laughs> That's coming out of me. I heard people tell me, Brother Purcell, he said, when he was going to fill with the head, asked God to fill him with the Holy Ghost when he came to church and he wanted to be filled, and he came to church and he didn't get filled, went home, was taking a shower, getting cleaned up, everything, and next thing you know, he just began to speak in tongues. Mm -hmm. I was filled in the back seat of a Cadillac, going down the interstate, <laughs> going to be prayed for by for it then was not my pastor, but became my pastor. Mm. Yes, I'm again. I'm 
<laughs> my son was sitting in the front seat of my van. Mm -hmm. So I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I said, you do? I said, start praising him. About five minutes later, speaking in tongues. Wow. Mm -hmm. See, God ain't made that difficult. When a lot of times we have to fight is our understanding. We're battling with trying to grasp and understand. There's going to be a whole lot of things about God you ain't going to understand. You're going to have to take about faith. Salvation, you got to take about faith. That's right. Do you understand? Because I, I don't understand the virgin birth. No. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how his blood cleansed them. Did you see something being cleaned by the blood? Mm -hmm. I don't understand it. We're going to stop it from receiving. Come on. I can't understand the miracle. Neither do I understand how you can take a black cow, eat green grass, and come out with white milk, but it happens all the time, don't it? There's a lot of things you ain't gonna understand. There's a lot of things in God's word that He's promised you that you ain't gonna have no total and complete absolute understanding of. But that doesn't that doesn't mean that it's not beneficial. So we hope we help you. We hope that somehow, if you have not been filled with the Holy Ghost, that it has made you hungry, at least made you from, come to a point of wanting to inquire, of wanting no more, wanting to know more. And if you ask God, He'll fill you. But that's for people that's already that know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. But people that don't know Jesus, never known Jesus as their personal Savior. I want to say he died for you. He loves you. He paid the price for you, all of your sins. That's song, every last one of them. He said, but if you'll just believe that he died for you and rose from the grave, he'll come into your heart and be your Lord. And if you believe that with all of your heart, I want you to pray with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner, but I believe that you died for me and that you rose from the grave. I believe that your blood cleanses me of all sin, that I'm washed, I'm cleansed. I accept you into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Teach me now how to walk with you. Teach me your word. Give me understanding. But thank you for eternal life, God. Thank you for abundant life. You prayed that prayer and you believed it. With all of your heart. This day, not down the road, not 10 minutes or 10 hours or 10 days, this very moment, if you pray that prayer for me, that you have eternal life. You are now his child. But you obey, the Bible says, like a newborn baby coming into this world. That baby is real. The baby comes in this world, is breathing. Crying, it's kicking, it's moving. It has life. But that baby can't raise itself, can't train itself, can't develop itself. That baby needs help. And so, just like a newborn baby has to eat, as a newborn baby in Christ, we need to eat of God's Word. And so, I encourage you. To read the book of John, just start there. It'll tell you what God has done for you, what God is doing for you, what God will do for you. And as you read, you, there may be a lot you don't understand. That's why a, a church is so important, so that you can learn and be trained and disciple. And you got questions that you can answer for you. 
and you'll have a fellowship of believers around you to strengthen you and encourage you, lift you up when you're down, to help you understand when you're confused. I believe Powerful Living is a wonderful church, and we would love for you to come out and visit us. We have Bible study every Wednesday at 7.30, every Thursday at 12 noon, and we get teachers and every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. We'd love for you to come out and join and be with us. But if not us, find a good Bible believing church. That's God for me. God, lead me to the right church, right ministry. And when you get there, you'll know if, you'll know at least this day, that you might be right. If, ask them, do you believe this Bible, the whole Bible, all of the Bible? And if they tell you, well, that ain't it. Keep on moving. God got something else for you. All right? All right. We love you. And if you get to be here tomorrow at 12 noon, for Bible study, if you can join us, then join us. If not, join us Sunday morning. All right. God bless you. Those that are fasting, we'll be here Friday night to close it out. We're going to have a Holy Ghost time. You need something, you need God to do something in your life. Come on out and do it. I believe God bless you. All right. Amen. Hallelujah.